Hi everyone, and welcome to my options portfolio. I will start with my thesis for the overall market, looking at the S&P 500, as well as the NASDAQ 100. Then I will take a look at my options portfolio, starting with Robinhood and Tastyworks. Then I will go over a couple of plays that I'm looking for in this upcoming week. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I do this video every two weeks, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. Looking at the logarithmic chart for the S&P 500, this is a chart I've referenced a few times, but it really gives a lot of context to the recent price action that we've seen. The last time that we've seen prices above this line was here in 1997, all the way through the dot-com bubble, where we quickly retraced all the way back down to the middle of this range then rallied a little bit before retesting here in 2008, which was established long ago, initially here in 1942, 1975, all the way through 1982, predicted the bottom here for the 2008 crisis before we've seen the massive rally that we've experienced here recently. And since then, we've been in the middle of this range for quite a long time. Until recently here, we've broken out of this resistance level and we've created this long-term trend here, which is currently projecting a price of almost 6,000 on the S&P 500 in December of 2022. As I mentioned, whenever we have what I'm calling a super cycle, I've seen this mentioned a few times other places, but, but it's a super cycle to where we are outside of our normal range, but that does not mean that the bull run is ending. We're just getting to a pretty high valuation potentially. And then if we retrace, it'll be somewhere into the middle of this range, which if this chart continues to hold and this trend continues, We'll see prices similar to right now, again here in 2025 or 26. But that gives us a lot of potential upside if we do reach these high levels. Maybe reduce your stock position around this range and then look to buy back in at a lower valuation. Of course, this is a macro look at the S&Ps. And despite being at all-time highs, it's on a bullish trajectory. Also, looking at the regular chart for SPY. This is the bullish channel all the way from March. And we have this longer term trend from October 18th to the previous highs in February of 20. And now here again, we've seen some interactions with that price here in February of this year, again in March. And now we've broken through that longer term trend line here in April of 21. And to me, this indicates that we're going to interact with the shorter term trend here, which is currently projecting no resistance until around at least $410 per share. If we do get this full breakout here, this longer term trend line will become support and we could see a widening out of the range here in the SPY, which as a long term trader will be beneficial for me and potentially give us some ranges to trade even if we're trying to do some shorter term options. Looking at the NASDAQ longer term chart, you can see we have this very substantial trend line that we've been basically following for quite a few decades at this point. And as long as we're right above it, it seems like we have some pretty decent support going all the way back to the 1990s and again here in the 2000s. But anytime we get way off, like we did here in the dot-com bubble, and what seems to be happening here since June of 2020, we're getting to be well above this longer term trend line, which could be indicating we're starting to see a bubble forming. Of course, that does not mean that we're starting to get bearish on the markets. This bubble could obviously go much, much higher as we did here for the dot-com bubble. And if we did start to sell even early on, when the NASDAQ was sitting around 600, we would have missed out on a massive, massive run all the way up to around 4,500. And since then, we haven't even touched that pricing again. The lowest we got was down to 8,200. So this does not signal sell to me quite yet. It does mean that we might get an acceleration and some kind of bubble forming here in the future, but I'm still bullish overall on the NASDAQ. Moving over to the recent price action in the NASDAQ, you can see we've been trending up and moving into this bullish wedge. We then broke out to the upside and then broke back down here, found some support around the 300 level, bounced back up to 322, found some more support somewhere around 310, 311. And since then, we've broken through this resistance level, which indicates to me we could see another move up to retest these highs around $337 per share. 
looking at my Robinhood account, you can see we're finally back in the green over the past three months, up just over 3% here. Not up to my previous highs of February 20th, which is around the same time that the NASDAQ was topping out. Because I trade mostly NASDAQ stocks in this portfolio, it makes sense that I had a little bit of a dip alongside of the NASDAQ, and since then we've been going basically sideways. Over the past month, I'm up 6% from previous lows. And up over the past year, you can see we had this sideways price action since January, finishing up a pretty strong year, still up 50% in the last year. Looking at my current positions, we finally have some stocks that are in the green. Snapchat, one of my longer term plays here, currently in a little bit of a loser still, but up much more than it was previously. You can see it was worth around $2.50 at one point, and I only got a $1.10 credit. Uh, but since then, the stock has rallied back. AMC, a little bit of a profit. AMD, finally another one that's been rallying back. At one point, this was worth $2.07, and I got a $2.35 credit for it, so it wasn't a losing position for a while. Currently, it's in a little bit of a profit, $36 here. DraftKings, still in a little bit of a loser, but I do believe this is going to continue upwards. Ford, this is a pretty new stock for me. I only have $2 at risk here, and I did get a $0.40 cent credit for this one. Not a lot of downside, and I'm just still bullish long-term on Ford. GE, another longer-term play for me, continues to do very well. NEO, I think NEO is a little bit underpriced and is going to continue up alongside of Tesla. If you didn't see my last video where I talked pretty in-depth about some short-term trading and technical analysis of Tesla, definitely worth a view, as I think NEO is going to move pretty similar to Tesla. PLTR, this one's been moving sideways for quite a while, which is fine for me as an options trader. It can go sideways and I can still make money but it's one I'm paying a little bit more attention to. And then Tattooed Chef, a little bit of a profit here, and this one's my furthest one out to May 21st already. Snapchat, I'll be looking to roll this week as we're already past that 21 days to expiration that I usually like to trade at. So I might roll this one out, get a little bit bigger credit here, but we'll see. Moving over to my Tastyworks portfolio, you can see I'm up again here on my IRA, year to date up $326. Again, this was some short-term options trading I did in Tesla that generated most of these gains last week. So definitely check that out. My taxable account's also doing pretty well, back up to over 35,000 and almost $3,000 in total profits year to date in this account. A little bit less than 10%, but still doing well for the year. Still have $21,000 not invested, which means I'm not fully invested. Fully invested for me is usually around 50% of my account. And that's because we did have some volatility in the NASDAQ stocks. And I wasn't quite comfortable going all the way back into them quite yet. But it looks like we're going to be turning the corner. And it's time to put a little bit more capital at risk and get long on the NASDAQ stocks once again. Moving on to my positions here, you can see starting off with Microsoft. I'm currently short the 220 to 10 puts. And I got $160 credit for that. Currently, it's in most of that profit. And I do need to roll those up early in the week. I would prefer to do it on a down day, but we'll see if we get one of those in this upcoming week, as the jobs data was pretty good. Looking at Roku, another one that's in a pretty big winner here. CrowdStrike, almost max profit already. I'll probably wait to roll this one up and look to close it and wait for a better entry. Pinterest, about 50% profit already. A lot of these tech stocks rallied into the end of the week, so that's why you're seeing mostly profits. Apple, about 50% profit, only risked $500 here. I got a $100 credit, almost at 50% profit. Netflix, again, 50% profit. Definitely need to make some adjustments going into this week. Simon Property Group, this one's fine. Short the $100 to $95 puts. Peloton, about 30% profit. Might look to roll this one up as well. Square, this one's fine. No adjustments needed. It's only at $90 profit out of $260. Boeing. Boeing needs to rally for me. It's been doing fine, no issues, but it's only at $22 profit out of $270 potential. And I'm already down to 26 days to expiration. Disney, another longer term position. 26 days to expiration, only $17 profit out of 170 potential. As long as it rallies a little bit from here, I'll be fine. Or even if it stays here for a couple more days, I'll probably be in a better profit. Etsy, got plenty of room here, $7 profit out of $250. Starbucks. I'm short the 150s here. I'm short the 105s and the stock's only at 109. Hasn't been very volatile here, so this might be the last time I trade Starbucks until we get some volatility. Costco's been on a monster run and I'm actually short the calls here, so this is a short position because Costco had a huge run and I do think it's a little bit unsustainable. Looking at Lemonade here, in a little bit of a losing position, even though the stock's all the way up at $95 and my puts are down at 88. Because there's so much volatility, this is still a losing position. Jumia, 
another loser for me right now. Still at 38 and I'm down at 35, so there's still potential for a profit here. Beyond me, very small profit. I've, I've rolled this out in time a few times at this point to get bigger credits, but the stock is still sitting at 131 and I'm down at 130, so hopefully the stock rallies a little bit. Lulu, they came out with earnings. They kind of underperformed, but they put out a very good guidance and I'm still bullish on the stock. Definitely check out my video outlining the Lulu earnings. Nike, they've had some issues talking about their position over in China. Stock's basically going sideways, so this is an iron condor right here. Match Group, another one that's in a small loser, but the stock is at 142 and I'm down at 135. SPY, I've traded a couple of positions in here and I'm short a $2 wide call spread just to protect myself from the downside a little bit in case we bounced off of that resistance line that I mentioned earlier. That did not happen, so this is going to be a losing position, but I'm still taking profits on my puts here. And then I have a call credit spread, which is part of an iron condor, and I'm losing some money on the calls as well. Probably gonna end up closing these for a bit of a loss or rolling them up. We'll see how the price action is on Monday, but I'm expecting it to be up. Another iron condor here on the Russell. Pretty comfortable, got a little bit of a profit, but I would like a little bit more profit here. And then we have the Qs, another iron condor, losing a little bit of money to the upside, but I did roll these down for a pretty big credit. Again, I expect the Qs to be up, so I might close these put spreads. So I'll definitely have to keep an eye on this iron condor. I may end up rolling up the puts a little bit, but I'll probably lose money either on the up or the downside just because the Qs seem like they're gaining a little bit of volatility. Moving on to my watch list. Some of the stocks that I'm interested in here are Fiverr, as well as Chewy stock. Chewy has found a little bit of a floor, possibly PayPal, as well as GLD. Starting with Fiverr here, it's hard to put any trend lines on this chart because it's had such a massive run in such a short amount of time. And the stock is also very young, only going public here in January. So it seems unrealistic that it could potentially sustain this long-term trend. And it makes sense that it would finally break back down below here after going all the way up to $332 per share. Since then, we've fallen all the way back down to 185, and we seem to have found some support in this price range. Currently, the stock is down a little bit here pre-market to $217 per share, and it seems to make sense to me that you could potentially sell some puts somewhere in the 170 to 180 range, especially if you can get it now while the stock is way down. Do understand that we are in a full down channel here with the red WMA being over the blue EMA. But on the longer term chart, we're still in a bull pattern on the weekly with the blue being over the red. It seems like we've broken out of this shorter term down channel that we had established briefly, breaking out to the side here and potentially offering some upward momentum up to $244 or $45 per share. And as I mentioned, we've gapped down a little bit this morning to 217, which offers a little bit of upside potential here. Taking a look at Chewy here, you can see another massive run from March all the way until the highs of February from $22 per share all the way up to $120 per share. And currently the stock is sitting around $82 per share. And it found some support here, as I mentioned, at the $78 price point. And we have a very strong level of support down here at $71 or $72 per share, which was established here in October twice and then here in November. And then it would push through and came back and retested in December. So I, I recognize this as a very strong point. And if you can sell some puts in this lower price range, I expect this support level to hold. Again, we have this longer term trend line representing a potential upward price target. But anytime these trends are so aggressive, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to retest up here somewhere around $100 or $105 per share. But it's a decent price point to set as a goal. Looking at the daily chart, you can see this very sharp drop that we had. And since then, we've gone basically straight sideways. And the pre-market pricing just popped in, so we're here at $84 per share. So we're up a little bit from our market close on Thursday. So for me, I have support down here at $71.50 and a price target somewhere in the 105 price range. Of course, there will be resistance at the big hole number of 100, which could represent a turning point where we would see some more downward price action after touching that point. Moving on to PayPal here, you can see we have some pretty long-term growth trends. The lower one is pretty aggressive and it goes all the way back to 2017 here. There's a little bit shorter term one that's a little less aggressive, representing a price target somewhere around the $200 price point. If we do see a down move, that would be where I would be buying. So the stock is a little bit overvalued based on these trend lines. Even on the more aggressive trend line, it would still be around 210, 205 to 210. 
and you can see the stock has opened up pre-market basically at its market close. So for me, PayPal has a little bit more probability to go sideways or potentially retest downward. This is a little bit stronger company, so it didn't have as strong of a down move as the others, but it has shown some pretty solid resistance here at 225, which was established here in January, retested later in January, here in March, and then finally again here in March. And it looks like we've created a little bit higher low, which could potentially indicate a little bit higher high somewhere in the 250 to 255 range, at least in the short term. And lastly, for my watch list, we do have GLD, which is the Spider Gold Trust. You can see we have a long term bullish trend here, continuing to make higher lows here all the way up until we've had this downward price channel, which we've been holding since August of this year. And we are currently sitting right in the middle of that channel, but it seems like we're going to start finding some support down here at the 157.50 level. And we have some shorter term trends starting to push up gold. And if we start seeing some support here, these trend lines could push gold out of this downtrend and potentially at least go sideways, maybe up to this higher level of resistance somewhere around 171 as an upward price target for now, giving you a little bit of upward potential. So I would be risking off of the 157 level and looking for a price target of around 170. Let me know if you like this format a little bit better. Going over the broader markets, my individual positions, and then maybe just a handful of stocks giving a little bit more in-depth information on my watch list. I think it's a little bit more useful for you as the viewer to see exactly how I'm thinking about individual stocks versus generally just mentioning the ones that I'm going to look to trade and giving actual price targets and analysis of the current price action. So let me know if you like that. If you got any value out of this video, definitely like and subscribe. I do this video every two weeks, so make sure you hit the bell and don't miss out on any of my future content. I also do individual stock videos and updates throughout the week, so definitely check those out as well. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment value, and have a great day.